you are going to love the chapter in there called Continuing Bonds and the Spiralling Effect. And Alex was a strong believer that if you lived in a house all your life and you died there, then you would be stuck within this environment to an extent. It'd be very confusing, this transfer of consciousness into a disembodied state. And he mentioned, it was kind of a very romantic chapter, because he said, you get a couple that live there and one will promise the other, if I die, I will wait for you. And he said he went to a few locations where he, he went in, a couple lived there, one had died, and then five years later the other person died. But they were on slightly different time levels within the building, so they never got to see each other. And he said it's this spiralling effect. The longer you spend, spend in spirit, the harder it is to communicate with all those other people that passed over. So he said when he went in, he tried to act as a psychic counsellor. And he, he mentions that quite a lot. He mentions psychic counselling. He always referred to himself as a ghost counsellor as well. He said when he went into a location, he wouldn't walk around with the pen and pencil and tape recorder all the time. Sometimes he'd just sit there and have a think. And people would say, well, what are you doing? And he said, well, I'm, I'm counselling the ghosts because they can't see each other and they want to leave. And, you know, visually, if we were to go in, we probably wouldn't have found that very interesting because it's all in Alex's head. We needed him to talk about it to really get the really kind of juicy material out of there. So he did. He said, I'd reunite them through this counselling aspect. I'd say, you're here, you're here, you're lost. Look, I'm bringing you closer together. Can you see each other now? And he'd say he'd reunite them. And at that point, they were reunited. He'd let them go. What happened after that? Again, these are one of, the, one of the many questions we want to ask. Were those people that lived there presently, did they then experience things after that, where Alex went in and joined them together? Was there more activity, or were, were they genuinely gone after that? Had he released them into what some might call the light, or on after that? We don't know, but he talks forever about this spiralling effect and joining people together and seeing if they can meet. But he, he was a strong believer in residual energy in buildings. He, he'd go in and just go, whoa, you know, all kinds of things happening here on many, many different levels. It, there's a lot of documentary style stuff in there describing that where he walks you through step by step as the reader and says, I, it was so traumatic, it brought tears to my eyes. He'd really feel the emotions coming in, whether it be some sort of violent incident or some really sad tragedy going on. It's a re it's a re pretty dramatic for it. <laughs> yes. Oh, absolutely. Uh, there was um, an interesting paper in the Australian Journal of Parapsychology a couple of years ago with a, a doctor of psychology from um, Brazil, and they published a paper on counselling the deceased for post-traumatic stress disorder. Really unique paper because it couldn't be peer-reviewed by its very natures. It, it, it couldn't go through that process because here's someone claiming that they're counselling the deceased. The only way they could make it scientific was say, these are my accounts of counselling the dead, just like Alex was doing. I'm going to use Cartesian scepticism, which basically means I'm going to be really critical of my own experiences. And they did, they were critical of every single account and it created a big open dialogue. Um, so we do know of people doing this. They're, they're not going in and wanting to make this big hoo-ha about an investigation. They want to counsel people that they are adamant have passed over. So we, we do get this in the literature now and then. It's remarkable when you hear these accounts. So hopefully that chapter will really interest you and you can draw some links between your own experiences and that. And if you do, I'd love to hear more about your own experiences. <laughs> Just to these experiences, you get the suggestion um, from his mentions of the spiralling effect and these continued bonds in the afterlife that once he joined these people together, that they were moving on. And there could be all these terms that you've just mentioned and entering the light and so forth. Again, if I could trawl through this extra box of material and his opinions on counselling the discarnate, then maybe he'd give specific terminology for it. But certainly, the ideas that you've mentioned are very much linked with his ideas as well. I think he believed that there could be a point where you could just move on and no one within that environment would experience haunting type phenomena again. I mean, I'm very much middle ground because I'm coming at this as a, a psychologist. I, I, I'm, I'm very sceptical, but I admit that people had these experiences. I can't deny the fact that people say they've seen ghosts or had psychic experiences, but these experiences are also documented as well. I'm very much interested in his perspective of what he's seeing and what he's doing. As a psychologist and parapsychologist, it fascinates me. And there could be something to it when people are having all this haunting phenomena. He goes in and counsels them and lets them see the light. And then afterwards, people in that environment aren't encountering anything anymore. You could argue that because they saw him do this, that it's placebo, and therefore all the activity they associated with haunting, they're now glancing over and it's not registering. But if they didn't know he'd done that, and they go in and nothing's happening anymore, that's, that's interesting, because then where's the influence? There's so many different avenues you could go in.
I, I guess that's brought us to time. Once again, I really hope that was interesting. A lot of people say when, as I say, if you do a topic on one particular individual, is it going to really interest people? Because my own PhD has been on bereavement experiences and how helpful having a paranormal experience in bereavement is compared to people that don't. And this is really broad. 50 to 60% of the population have these experiences. Why do we have them? Uh, what's the actual nature of these experiences? Is it you creating them or is it something independent? So perhaps that's something later on with Watkins I could come back and talk about. I've even studied specifically instances of telephone calls from the dead. And that again has been a big topic of interest. So hopefully I'll be back sometime. But thank you so much for coming to listen to this talk on Alex Tanis and Conversations with Ghosts. Thank you.